Welcome, Hebrews and Hebrews. Welcome to the channel. This is Oldfield Disciple. We're going to cruise with Jesus and we're going to talk about it. Uh, first of all, let me ask for forgiveness for lack of content here over the last month or so, uh, month and a half. Uh, let me give you a quick little rundown. <coughs> uh, starting December 15th of last year, uh, up till January 9th. I was a part of or uh, spoke at five funerals of friends of mine. Uh, it seemed like every other day I turned around, somebody was calling me saying, you know, something happened. There was a couple of them that were kind of expected, and there was a couple that were uh, totally unexpected. Uh, one, one crashed his motorcycle hit the dirt. Uh, had a wife and a young son. Um, good friend of mine. Uh, young kid, he was 35 or so. Anyway, um, the family asked me to, to speak at that one, which was, it was an amazing um, celebration of life for, for this young man. Uh, there was probably close to 800 people there. Uh, of all sorts and backgrounds. We had uh, one of the ladies um, took notes and, and talked to and, and wrote down. We had 13 different uh, motorcycle groups, or motorcycle clubs, sorry, uh, that were there. We had the Hells Angels, we had the Manditos, uh, Brotherhood, Sons of Anarchy. It was amazing because one of my good friends that I uh, I had working for me in the old building when he was in South Dakota, North Dakota, uh, just breaking out. Um, really good kid. Um, he he caught on quick. But anyway, he's a uh, he lives in Minnesota and he's actually the president of that chapter of the Hell's Angels. Um, I was kind of impressed of talking to him. Um, I hadn't talked to him in years, other than a few times on Facebook. Um, but he, had out, he has outlawed in his his chapter of the Hell's Angels um, drug use. Um, if, you, if you're caught using drugs, you're out. You know, and some of the the things that he he told me that he's done was was amazing. Another amazing thing, which is almost unheard of. Him traveling from Minnesota right in the middle of the winter, um, he couldn't ride his motorcycle down here, he couldn't ride his bike down here. And not only did he have to um, speak with all the motorcycle clubs across the, the country as he made his way down here, um, so there was no issue. The Banditos, which is almost an arch enemy of the Hell's Angels, um, the Banditos here in this area let him ride one of their bikes I say all this because it was it was amazing to watch Gentiles of all sorts normally arch enemies of one another come together for a common cause for a common reason this young man made an amazing impact on so many lives that he you come in contact with it, it just it was, it was utterly mind blowing um, at what we got to witness there, and, and the blessing that Yahweh placed upon me and my wife to be able to uh, to speak to the family and the friends uh, in the celebration of the young man's life. Um, what a blessing that was! Odd story on that one too. The the father in law of this young man. Um, was actually um, a three-term elected sheriff of, of Eddy County, which is just right next door to us. Um, and he's been retired for about 12 years, but we had a sheriff there, we had a hell's angel, we had a pastor, we had a farmer there. I said, that's that's the start to a heck of a good joke right there. You know, you got a, you got a hell's angel, you got a sheriff, a pastor, and a farmer walk into a bar. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, it was a great day. Anyway, so we had that one that was on the 23rd of December. Um, and it got me to praying and thinking. You know, and, and I come to the conclusion after, after much prayer and consideration that um, I needed to take a small sabbatical and slow down for a minute. Be still and know that he's Yahweh. And, and so I did. And um, I told the congregation that 
faster in me being inexperienced in, in, in certain things because uh, I took the sabbatical uh, unintentionally. Uh, I kind of distanced myself from Yahweh as well. And it didn't happen because, okay, I don't, I don't want to read my Bible. I don't want to pray. I don't want to do this for Yahweh. That ain't how it went down. As I took my break, spirit of pride and the spirit of, of jealousy ranged up inside of me and for a minute before I realized what was going on you know, a week or so into this I realized that I was walking in entitlement that I have worked my ever loving ass off for this ministry, for, for the kingdom of Yahweh, uh, for the company I work for to get paid for, for my own personal small business that I own, um, and I was just more plum out, and so you know, when I took the sabbatical, I took it with the intentions of getting closer to Yahweh, but in the process, I kind of distanced myself from him because I didn't do my normal thing, I didn't my Bible to get um, a word from the Lord to, to bring to the people. You know, I, I would read, you know, snippets here and there. I would read snippets here and there, uh, but nothing serious. And as I stepped back from it, and I realized what was going on, and I, I began uh, correcting the issue.
sufficient for thee. Well, you don't understand grace. And I've, I've spoke on this many, many, multiple times. Let me speak on it again right quick. <coughs> grace is the divine influence upon the heart. Jeremiah 16, 9 says that the heart is deceitfully wicked above all things. Who shall know it? So if your heart is deceitfully wicked and you're following your heart on your own merit, your own intelligent intellect and knowledge, you're always going to walk in disobedience and wickedness. You're always going to. And so you need that grace of Yahweh, that divine influence that, that it captivates your heart and shines the light forward of the path. Thy word is a light unto my feet and a lamp unto my path, right? It shines that light towards Messiah that leads you in righteousness and obedience. You need that grace. That's what the grace means, divine influence upon the heart. But you can't have grace without mercy. You can't have, you can't have mercy without grace, but you can't have grace without mercy because mercy is the unmerited favor, which a lot of people misunderstand and misinterpret grace to be unmerited favor. Well, grace is unmerited favor. What is mercy? You know, you must say grace, grace, or mercy, mercy. It's grace and mercy. Mercy is the unmerited favor. It's the, it's the fact, and the Holy Spirit gave me this one this morning, it's the fact that you are redeemed and ransomed, bought and paid for with a price. And you are now the spotless blemish, virgin, bride to be the Yeshua Mashiach. Engaged to him through the Ruach, the Holy Spirit. 
mistake. I go gossip. For what he did. That should make us, with the divine influence upon our heart, grateful beings that we are adopted into and heirs to the throne, a royal priesthood of the Almighty Creator, the Most High.
side of it, the pretty of it. She's already done that. She's convinced herself. She always said if she looked at her and touched it, she'd die. Well, she's still here. <clears throat> at this point, they really don't have a an understanding of what death is anyway. I'm, I'm going to go out on them there and say. So they're not, you know, did God really say? So I've looked at it and I've touched it and I've not died. Sure, it is good. I'm going to check it out. Now I've got, uh, one of these days I'm going to bring out a teaching on what I believe went down that day but this is what truly went down that even added to Yahweh's word to protect herself from falling into temptation but in that adding to Yahweh's word it caused her to fall same thing that's happening in today in today's popular institution of religion called Christianity did Yahweh say Jesus Yeshua paid it all for us we don't have to do none of that no more. Yahweh, he was he was a harsh, mean, unforgiving Yahweh from Genesis to Malachi. And then we went 500 years, he thought about his error, and I sent Yeshua here to, to correct the behavior that I had about being so harsh on my people. And now I'm just going to be a nice Yahweh, a nice Elohim. That don't sound right. It don't sound according to scripture. Malachi 3 6. I'll never change. And Yeshua plainly saying, I didn't come to change anything. I come to make it all in fulfillment. I come to, to fulfill it. Not one jot, not one tittle shall pass from the law. Heaven and earth will come to naught first. What part of that does Christianity not get? So as we begin looking at that, we begin thinking on those on that premise. What are we doing? We're we're listening to the enemy who's infit, infiltrated this popular institution of religion. It's sown a lie that everything in in the Torah has no bearing no more because we're not we're not under the curse of the law. We're not. The law says sin. Is death just like Eve? She had one command: if you eat it, that day you die. He always said, if you sin, the consequence of sin is death. If you sin, you die. That was the curse of the law. Yeshua lifted that curse of the law, but didn't lift the law. He took the curse upon Himself. So you and I didn't have to, if we would choose righteousness. The Torah's still there because He's our example. Right? I mean, not a Christian out there, not no one in Christianity will argue with me on that. That Yeshua came as our example, a perfect example who never sinned. What's an example? Someone to strive to be like, right? Okay. What did Yeshua do? He always pointed us to, to the Father. Pray the Father, look the Father, the Father, the Father, the Father, the Father. We've made an idol called Yeshua Jesus Jesus made him into an idol and exalted him above what he came to do took him off his throne and reseated ourselves on the throne as Lord and Master of our own lives telling him how we're going to be saved when we're saved and it's all on me except for it's none of my works we don't do works around here it's I'm not going to be obedient to my spouse, but she better be obedient to me. That's how we operate in the eyes of Yeshua when we say, I don't have to do that no more. Exodus 31, 13 says that you will know them. And this is a sign that these are my children, my chosen, that they keep the Shabbat, the seventh day rest. That's, that's the sign. Today, we love the Ten Commandments. Scratch that one. The fourth one's out of the way. You know, move it because we don't have the Sabbath no more. We have the Lord's Day, which is Sunday. We worship the sun god. Sunday, Helios. That's how we get the heliocentric model. We're worshiping the sun. The, the enemy is, again, infiltrated things. He's the prince of the power of the air. He's infiltrated. He's sown some lives. And now, we're insignificant little teeny tiny beings 
grand scheme of this ever-expanding infinite universe with stars billion times bigger than our sun and, and planets billion times bigger than us and the Goldilocks come on now I'm not even going to get into that but heliocentric helios Blessed, be encouraged, and always be frustrated. Soul filled aside. Pray for me as I'll pray for you. And we're going to get back to digging into the scriptures. We're going to look at a lot of things. We've got a lot of things going on right now in, in the world. And um, as a shepherd, I try to keep my eyes on the ball and keep my eyes open for what's coming down the pike and what's going on. And of course, I'm not a prophet, so I, I can only through cycles of history and through cycles of, of already other issues, I can make a, an educated assessment on what I see coming. And when I line it up and, and, I, and I look at it through the lenses of Scripture, Yahweh, Yahuwah's Word, infallible, inerrant Word, when I look at it all together, then I kind of keep a direction of, of what's really going on. And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what the world's doing, right? I mean, it doesn't. But then again, it does because we can't just be like an ostrich and bury our head in the sand and say, nothing's going on outside, nothing's going on outside. La, 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 la. You know, and barricade ourselves out. We can't do that neither. Yeshua says, those who endure to the end shall be saved. What do you mean endure? Endure means to go through some kind of issue that's going to cause you to rise above normal expectations. That's endurance. <coughs> normal operations and expectations. So if we endure to the end, it means hmm, we might have to do some work, won't we? We might have to go through some hardships and trials and uh, oh yeah, trials and tribulations. I believe Yeshua told us we're going to do that too. But remember, it's not the world against us. It's not our brother against us. It's not our our uh, fleshful enemy against us. It's the spiritual demons, fallen angels, and wicked high places. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities of darkness and wickedness in high places. It's it's the enemy. And Ahash, who in the beginning, in the garden, was but a small serpent. And by the time we see him in Revelation, he is a big dragon. And the Lord says he becomes quick because he knows he has but a short time. We're, we're getting close. I, we're not in the Great Tribulation, and I can promise you we don't have all the elements. You know, and, uh, but we're, we're getting there. You know, it's kind of like being on a ship and sailing the seas and looking through the telescope and going, I see land ahead, land of hope. Well, we're not, we can't just hop out of the boat. Yeah, we got to wait till the boat gets there. That's us traveling through time. He always placed us here for this specific time, for this specific purpose, right here, right now, to be holy, cut out, set apart for his specific purpose. All things work together for good to those who love Yahweh. Right? Come on, guys. Think about that. I'll probably do a, another video here in a little bit. Um, we'll look at some, some scripture next to, to what's going on um, in Ukraine and Russia. Um, I've got some thoughts and some ideas there. Y'all be blessed, be encouraged, and always be frustrated. Go look this stuff up. I ain't just making it up as I go. I read, 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 read the word. And as the Holy Spirit comes and blesses me and gives me utterance to speak, that's how I speak, that's how I walk, that's how I act. It's whenever I close my ears off and go, we're going to do it Matt's way for a minute, that's when I get in trouble. And that's when you get in trouble. Keep your eyes focused on Yeshua. Do that and you can't mess up. Okay? As long as you have your wife wrapped up in your arms and you're hugging her and you are kissing her with all passion and love you have in your heart for her, there's no, no other girl or no other guy that can come along and, and take your take your attention, right? If you're totally focused on your spirit, that's the way we're supposed to be with Yeshua. Be totally focused.
focused on him. And we, we don't see the pretty of the bad. But the enemy is dangling in front of us going, look how pretty it is. You can see that because we're engulfed and enveloped in passion and love with our Master and Savior. Y'all be blessed and encouraged. This is Northfield Disciple, and I will catch you guys on the next round.